Let's bring in now Adam Schiff. He is, of course, the ranking member of the House Intel Committee. Uh, Congressman, let's begin with your reaction to what happened in New York City. Well, horrified, I think, like everyone else. Uh, and we look in these early hours to try to figure out uh, was there something that we missed, um, something that uh, friends or family or others saw? Were they in the system? Uh, what can we tell uh, from any electronics uh, that have been seized? Uh, and, of course, most important in the early hours, is there anyone else out there? Uh, I was briefed last night. As of last night, we weren't aware of there being other uh, potential suspects out there, but that obviously has to be the initial priority. Do you suspect um, the fall of Raqqa and... The collapse of ISIS's uh, so-called uh, caliphate. Uh, do you suspect that that is what's inspiring some of these attacks? And should we expect an increase of attacks across the world because of their failure on the battlefield? Uh, I think you have to expect that uh, now that the physical caliphate is disappearing and the capital uh, Raqqa has fallen, uh, they're going to seek other ways to lash out to send a message that they're still quite lethal. Uh, so in some sense, yes, I think you're going to see attacks around the world. Uh, all that being said, the fall of Raqqa and the defeat of this uh, space in Syria and Iraq is very important to ultimately defeating ISIS uh, because you take away a lot of the ability to gather resources, to tax people, to collect oil income. Uh, you take away the sanctuary, sanctuary in which they can plot and plan. Uh, so it was a necessary step, but uh, not sufficient to put an end to them. But we are going to have to be uh, ever more vigilant uh, for these kind of uh, virtually inspired attacks uh, online. Uh, we still, I, I think, don't know enough, Joe, about this particular uh, attacker uh, to see, okay, was there something that we missed in the vetting when they came to the country? Now, that was years ago. Uh, were they radicalized here? Who were they associating with? Um, was there any kind of command and control by ISIS, or was this someone simply acting out on their own? Uh, it's still, I think, far too early to say. Congressman, uh, the President of the United States tweeted late last night uh, that they're going to uptick the extreme vetting, get back to that, and more enhanced extreme vetting in his tweet. I've just ordered Homeland Security to step up our already extreme vetting program, he tweeted. So let me ask you, as a member of the Intelligence Committee, having met with uh, many members of the intelligence community in, in closed-door sessions, is there any way that extreme vetting can get to someone who's been here seven years and vet the Internet as he sits in an apartment in Patterson, New Jersey, reading social media? Well, I don't think so. Uh, you know, there is some chance uh, here that the person could have been radicalized uh, eight years ago, uh, therefore before he came to this country. He came with a green card. It, it's far more likely, uh, given the passage of time uh, between his immigration here and the attack, that he was radicalized while he was here. Uh, and uh, how that happened and why that happened, I'm sure we'll uh, learn a great deal about. But it's hard to see, particularly when some of the folks, uh, like uh, those that were involved in the Boston Marathon bombing, uh, came here as, uh, as young people or as children uh, or as early teenagers, it's hard to see how you can vet against that. Or people that are second generation, how do you vet for the next generation? Obviously, you can't. So there are limits to that. Uh, you know, I understand the president wants to say something, that he's taking some action. Uh, but it's really uh, too early to say, uh, does this mean that we're going to now add Uzbekistan onto the list? Uh, is that how we're going to uh, conduct our, our policy in terms of who can come to the country or not? Um, I think we ought to dispassionately look at what happened here, what are the facts, and what are the policy implications. Uh, but it's, it's so early, uh, I think it's very hazardous to draw conclusions at this point. It is so early, but the president is up this morning drawing conclusions already. President Trump just tweeted. The terrorists came into our country through what is called the Diversity Visa Lottery Program, a Chuck Schumer beauty. I want merit-based. Uh, Julie Pace, obviously, this is the president already uh, casting blame for what happened uh, and c constantly suggesting that all problems that are happening in America are happening because of immigrants. He launched his campaign saying Mexicans were rapists uh, and murderers and everything else. And, of course, six months later in his campaign, he said he wanted to ban every Muslim from coming into this country. Uh, and now uh, he's once again suggesting a visa program was responsible for this killing. 
This has become the pattern for President Trump dating back to the campaign. No matter where an attack happens around the world, whether it's in the United States, in Europe, he immediately goes to, uh, to questions about immigration, questions about foreigners coming into the United States. This, this, uh, this shift that we've seen here with focusing on, on merit-based immigration now is uh, tying into a debate that's happening on Capitol Hill. Senator Tom Cotton, some others have been pushing for this idea that we actually switch our legal immigration system to focus more on merit as opposed to family connections, uh, some of the other standards that we currently use. Uh, Congressman Schiff, I'm curious if you have been briefed on this diversity lottery program uh, and that being the potential way that this uh, suspect came into, this, into the United States and if you know anything about the vetting behind that program. Uh, you know, the briefing I had last night from the FBI, uh, we were still, I think, gathering some of the very earliest facts. Uh, at that time, we knew where this person was coming from. Uh, we knew that he was a, a green card holder, but didn't know much more about that. Uh, so, no, I, I haven't gotten uh, any kind of uh, specific uh, new information in terms of the diversity program. But uh, I think it's kind of absurd in the hours after this terrible attack uh, to be using it as a fulcrum for a debate that has uh, has been going on in Congress for completely different reasons. Uh, there are legitimate reasons to look at how much uh, should we take immigration, uh, new immigrants on the basis of diversity, how much on the basis of merit. There are lots of considerations there. I've never really heard this made as a security argument. Uh, and uh, I, I think to use this tragedy in that way to push a different agenda uh, is not what the president ought to be doing right now. Well, the president, obviously, uh, Congressman, has other distractions. I'm curious what you thought about the latest developments and what we learned about Paul Manafort yesterday. Well, I think the indictments, uh, as well as the guilty plea by Papadopoulos, are very significant. Uh, here, the campaign manager, a central figure uh, in the presidential campaign, uh, was laundering money for years and continued to launder money, apparently, while he was the campaign chief. Uh, and one of the things I find most significant is uh, emails that the Washington Post reported some time ago. They talk about the public reports that Manafort, while campaign chair, was reaching out to those same oligarchs like Oleg Deripaska uh, that were funneling money to him that he was laundering uh, while doing work in Ukraine. Uh, he was reaching out to them during the campaign, offering information about his own campaign, the Trump campaign in an effort to try to collect more of the same kind of money he was laundering. So this was going on during the campaign. Uh, the Papadopoulos stuff is also very serious because uh, yet another Trump campaign person lying about their contacts with Russia. Uh, and here the campaign effectively notified as early as April, before the country knew about this, that Russia had possession of thousands of stolen Hillary Clinton emails uh, and wanted some kind of cooperative relationship with the campaign. It certainly looks like there was an offer of help, and at Trump Tower, it certainly looks like there was an acceptance of help. Congressman.